practice. So. Around. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Amber. I can turn here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Back. No, there was a tricycle on a car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly distracted, but. Yeah, I don't see Tracy yet, so. I can't. Oh, she can't find her link. Do you want to her panelist link? That's what she just texted me. Yeah, I can't. I my um my son logged me out of my Outlook on this computer, <laughs> and it's on his. So. <laughs> His computer know. actually like spontaneously combusted, so like no oh. fault of his own. So he had to start using mine. So now I'm all hooked up to the Southwick school system Good and out you. of my work at home. Yeah. Oh, there she is. All right. Ugh. Unfortunately, I don't have the, um, I'm looking for the open meeting law. Sorry. Hey, Tracy. Hi, sorry. No. I couldn't find the link at all. And I've been sending out, I don't know, dozens, hundreds of emails with links to Zoom meetings. And so when I search on Zoom panelists, that didn't really do it. Okay. Oh, and now we have a lot of us. One, two. We're missing Bernie, I guess. One, two. Three, four. Um, I'm sorry. I'm looking for the I'm I, uh, the public open the public meeting script. I which I don't have, but um, and Aaron's here too. Yeah, we've memorized it, so you can just say you, you've said it. How about that? <laughs> I I'm happy with that. Um, it doesn't seem quite official. Yeah. And I'm, Bill, I'm not do you desk. have it? I'm so sorry, everyone. No. I should have looked for this beforehand. I apologize. There's a link. Is it? Is it on the uh, Amherst Town website? Uh, just saying, according to the governor, we're actually doing this remotely and. <laughs> According yeah. to the governor, we're doing this remotely and um, oh, cool with it. <laughs> and I think it's always, isn't it always in the council packet too? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we have to say that it's being recorded for possibly being presented on, um, on, uh, on uh, Amherst AC, Media. Amherst Media. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think this will have to do, but we all know that this is um, in lieu of the official transcript, which we've heard many times. Um, right. I and guess, then, uh, yeah. Also, there's a star nine if you're phoning in. Oh, right. A star and nine. Raise and, your hand. And raise your hand. Yes. Raise your hand. Yeah, it, right. yes. raise well, we don't have any you, attendees. I told you memorized right? it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, I guess this meeting is 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 uh, open. Call to order. Um, any announcements? Um, and public comment doesn't look like there's any public comment. So um, I, I have a question yes. under public comment, and it, it's Certainly. for Guilford. I got a I got a note from um, a colleague wondering about um, where where to bring concerns about street lights and light trespass of street lights. Uh, where to bring that issue to? Um, uh, that she thinks it's us. I'm not sure, but I'm I, I'm going to ask anyway. You can just send to the office here. Uh, and I know that there's a there's a bunch of policy on it, a lot of guidelines about what you can can't do. Um, okay, I will I will do that. Yeah. Where, which street is it? Um, I. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Chestnut. I think it's on Chestnut. Yeah, we know all about her. Emily, okay. Oh, you do. <laughs> I see. Okay. And I mentioned something about lights. Please. I noticed last night I came out of town hall. It was around quarter of 10 and the lights in the parking lot weren't on. What do you Behind think? Town hall? Behind town hall. You know how that you have those big floodlights in the back over by the house, the gray house. So those lights weren't on at quarter of 10 last night. Okay, that's a us and Jeremy thing. 
Kim, I have an announcement. Yes, please. Um, I, some of you, I think, are aware that the, the Energy and Climate Action Committee um, and the MVP program issued their second draft of the Climate Action Plan um, a few days ago. And they're having a, a public comment meeting of the community groups that met to, in their previous outreach on the 11th. And I think some of you were involved in that. Um, and so they just want to get feedback on the plan. Great. You know, a big piece of which is transportation. Yes. Great. So um, I'm sorry, when did you say that? Do we know or should we look that up? Um, I can send it to you if, um, yeah. Okay. Guilford and Christine, you probably already have it, right? I don't, I did not receive it. I met with Stephanie this morning about the matrix of, you know, action items, but I didn't, I don't think I received the actual report. Okay, well, I, I can just send it to the whole committee if you want Thank me you. to. Thank mm you, -hmm. that would be lovely, yeah. Okay. Uh, Great. Um, sorry, so I just checked on the town hall website and it says the meeting is at six. Tonight? No, on the 11th. Oh, oh. The ECAC community task groups community meeting. Right, and so they, um, they invited some people, representatives of different groups, and I know Tracy was one of them. I don't know if anybody else on this group was, but um, so it's not it's not really a general community meeting. It's oh, I see. It's for those task groups that that were involved before. Well, there was there was somebody from DPW on the transportation meeting. Right, right. Amy was there. Amy was there. Yeah. Because it was it was transportation and infrastructure, right? Okay. Any other uh, announcements or comments? Um, is this an actual the recap of the TSO meeting on April twenty second? Someone doing Tracy? Are you doing that item, or maybe Darcy? No, not you, Darcy. Um. Well. Uh. They discuss the. They discuss this item, the item about Pomeroy Village intersection for most of the meeting, um, probably like ninety five percent of the meeting. And uh, I wrote up a summary for the indie that was not very summarized, very long. Um, and in the end, the and Chris was there and. Guilford. I mean, there were a lot of town folks there, and in the end, the committee, the TSO voted uh, for zero with one abstaining to vote in favor of supporting a single lane roundabout, um, and also to consider the reports from the TSO, I mean, sorry, from the TAC and from the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And then that was forwarded to the council and the council discussed it at their meeting on Monday. Right. And so they they read they read things twice before they vote. So that was the initial one was the main discussion. And then when it comes back the second time, we'll probably there'll probably be less discussion and a vote, uh, is my guess. Um, unless Chris comes up with some reason why this is not a good place for a roundabout. <laughs> Which she was, she was mentioning that before. <laughs> um, I said I would keep my mouth shut from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, thank you, Tracy. So we did, so that was some good work we, we did for- Yeah, all. I mean, I guess the question was just, you know, I don't think that the attack necessarily needs to speak to it anymore, but at the, both of the TSO meeting, but particularly at the council meeting, like there were concerns expressed by a number of people, including some business people in the area about the idea of a roundabout. And some of it were the same 
topics that have been brought up before, such as concerns about the safety of having a roundabout. Um, and also for one of the properties, it sounds like if there's a roundabout that there could be the loss of four parking spaces. I understood that to be, I think is it like the Amherst Montessori or what that, that side oh, of the, yeah. Well, it's not Amherst Montessori anymore, but is that, is that correct, Chris and Guilford? Was that where the... It's the building that had the Valley Transporter in it. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's the other side of the street. They would lose four parking spaces. Um, but but I, guess, I guess I had a question is, I mean, it's not clear yet because the traffic analysis hasn't been done, but if you had left turn lanes like on every approach, like it's possible that there would be the loss of parking in those scenarios too, right? So that wasn't something that was specified during the council discussion. But it seems like that would be a pretty big intersection. So I could see the loss of some parking there as well. I think the four way intersection that was shown um, in all those meetings was one that had been kind of pushed over to the east side. And we don't really know exactly where that's going to end up if if it were studied further we don't know if it would be pushed over to the east side it might actually be pushed over to the west side so there might be some loss right. of parking with that one also oh, that's good. well and i think too that correctly andy steinberg at the council meeting he pointed out that i mean some of the concerns that were being raised where people said well we don't like the roundabout over near at route 9 and 91 and things that i mean did i mean andy did correctly mention that um that this would be a single lane roundabout, it wouldn't be a larger roundabout and that there's some pretty significant differences between the two. So, mm -hmm. clear, so. Okay. Well, thank you for all that work, Tracy. Um, and so Guilford, you wanted the next agenda item is um, discussing townwide parking. Is that My, yes, hold on. Yes. So we talked about it a little bit the first um, couple of meetings ago, several meetings ago, it's a concept that we had come up with for parking. Um, I'll kind of share it now and um, I have to bring it back to the right place. Sorry. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. All right. So we talked about coming up with a, a sort of a policy which based itself on these three categories, road classification, the width of the pavement and traffic uh, flow data to come up with can a you, way to actually can decide. Can you it. scroll down so we can see it all? We can't, I can't see it all. Yeah, all I can see is the subject line. Now, Guilford, didn't you present this to the TAC already? Is that correct? I did. And yes. you guys talked a little bit about it. Let me, um, hold on a minute. I mean, maybe if you can make see it is, smaller. And then I guess it also went to TSO and they had questions, right? They did. So what's going to probably happen is it's going to come back out. Can you see it better now? Yeah, but scroll up. Scroll so we can see the body of the duck. Hold on. I got two screens going here, so you oh, have yeah. to. Oh, yeah, it's a little confusing. All right. That's so, better. Actually, just look at this piece here in the middle. Those are the three categories. Right. Because um, you can't get them all on the same page. Category three is on the third page. <laughs> um, there, we added in a couple of things about complete streets and so forth. The question is, I mean, it's going to probably come back to you about your opinion of this um, because everything is kind of, it may it may not come back to this committee to ask their opinion of how they, what they think of this. Um, and that's just sort of, I don't know if you want to talk about it more now or if you want to just take it think about it more. And if you're asked, then, then talk about it. Um, so you did, you said you did add, I mean, I, I know a major part of our discussion was, um, yeah, stressing um, enhanced um, complete streets, like making sure, you know, we can also have um, bikes, you know, bike lanes and that kind of stuff. So you did, it, I'm glad you added more of those kinds of things. Yeah, That's, those are 
this piece here. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if we could, well, what, what would we like to do committee members? Because, so, yeah. I mean, I had been interested in some of the discussion that happened at TSO, like where Guilford presented there, which I think was on March 25th. And um, I mean, there were some questions about, for example, um, about the restriction, which makes sense, you know, from a traffic standpoint and an access standpoint regarding parking on street um, in cul-de-sacs. But then it seemed like there were a number of TSO concerns just about like, what if somebody, a family on a cul-de-sac has an event and like everybody's parking on the street, like would those bands be um, always or would there be like some exceptions or how would people apply for that or like just logistically and and what i heard too is that the tso had wanted to maybe have some specifics like look at some specific examples about how that would impact different streets how different streets are categorized uh, so it seemed like the tso gave really good feedback so i don't know whether the dpw and guilford are busy responding to that feedback as well but um maybe i'm interested to see how it evolved like after that meeting maybe we could respond to that and so not you, go back to where we were like with our original discussion because it seemed like the tso yeah. had moved and raised some other issues as well i have a question about this and that is how is this going to be used is it going to be used when someone requests that there be parking on a street and then you go to this document and you figure out is there enough room for parking on the street and this helps the council to determine whether to allow parking on that street or is this something that the DPW is gonna to use to decide all over town which streets can have parking? So the purpose is not to go look for trouble. The purpose is that when people complain about trouble that then we take this and analyze and come up with some recommendations and then say, this is what we recommend for this, this street. And then the council can decide how it wants to move forward. But it does give a basis to say, yes, you need to be this or this or this. And if you're not that, then we recommend not having it and so mm -hmm. forth. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I wonder um, uh, how we link this particular issue, uh, this document up with our um, bike ped plan as well. Ultimately, do we say, I'm, I mean, I could imagine how we might prioritize certain streets where we want to have increased biking and, and, and walking as just you know, main intersections, main main routes as no parking on those streets as well. Like, for example, you know, one um, one sixteen or I don't know. It might help if if we connect this somehow with that plan as well. What are the thoughts there? Yeah, it may be that the uh, the two plans um, relate to each other without any explicit description. I mean, it, um, when one says this is a bike route and the other one says parking can't interfere with bike routes, that connection maybe is done already. Yeah. And so what are, you, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, one and two here are the ones that kind of deal with that. So arterials and collectors, there's no parking unless it's in designated spaces. So you have to make the room for the parking because we want the space for the shoulder and the bikeway on these roads first. Right. Okay. And so we, we kind of, that's kind of what those two were for. So that's then you're that that that's complementary then for yes the other. But then, mm -hmm. but then local roads is where the it gets sticky. If yeah. and you can decide well if if Lincoln's a local road but you want bike lanes on it then. You either sacrifice um, parking all the way for sure, or are you right. something like that? Yeah, yeah. So this isn't helping 
with those are the real sticking points, right? Those are the issues that the TSO has to deal with. Those are the really tricky ones, I think. Yep, yeah, but one, so that does tie back in. So one and two takes care of the main roads. Yeah. And then three kind of will actually have to rely on what the biking pedestrian plan says is the priorities. So if it comes back and says this road's a priority for, for bicycling, then we would probably use that as saying that this is a priority for biking. So we want one, two travel lanes and biking, or we want one lane of traffic and one biking lane, and then see if parking fits in. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and Lincoln is kind of, I was gonna say unusual, but now we've got a, a couple of Lincolns around town, but uh, it's, it's unique or uh, one of the properties is that it's not big enough for the traffic that it's carrying now. I mean, what had been originally just a, a little neighborhood road is become a, a feeder, yeah. not quite arterial. And so, you know, that's, I don't know if you could expand this policy enough to catch all of the unique things that are going on in Amherst, um, which, which, you know, it's, it's very tempting. And, and um, I also do see um, the point that perhaps the TSO was picking up on, on, uh, you know, on ha events on these, you know, people having events, there's nowhere else to park because, you know, it's, um, so um, except having exceptions for maybe events or whatever does seem like a good idea if there's a mechanism for doing that as well. Well, and I think too that, I mean, I saw these as being general guidelines and that like, for example, you know, based on the geometry of a certain road in a certain intersection that, I mean, this policy does call for like a slight setback in the parking, on street parking from the intersection, but depending on particular geometry, you might want to extend that. So I see it as just providing like some general guidelines, but like to your point, Kim, or you know, people could request exceptions or there could be, you know, right. some kind of rules about that too. Yeah, um, no, this and, does seem like a good idea. And one thing that came up at the TSO meeting as well is just about how roads are classified. So I don't know whether that's something we want to look at at all, but I know that it seemed like some people were concerned about how certain roads were classified. You Even mean, though there's a lot of roads in town, I mean, not to micromanage how they're classified, but like, are they local streets or are they arterials or collectors? Don't we have a map that shows that, Gilfrey? We do have, we have a, actually the easiest thing is a list we have, but we do have kind of a map that shows it. But then again, I kind of talk about this here is our, our list for classification is based on paving. And we may over classify a road because we want to have um, higher, Segregation rates in our paving program to show that it's degrading faster than it is. Um, so that, that's why when we in this memo at the bottom, we can't see. Can we? Oh. Nope, getting there. Okay, sorry. I was just sorry. And so, so while you're looking that up, Gilford, I would also note that in the case of Lincoln, and I don't know how much further down the hill this is true, but Lincoln really that is part of downtown parking. So, I mean, it's, it's not only is it too small for what it's doing, it's also in this area where uh, different policy, different, different things are going to be needed of it parking wise. That's a really good point, Aaron, because that's something I was noticing just the other day when I was taking my kid to school that I was noticing people getting out at the end of Lincoln towards the town and walking into town. And I thought, oh my gosh, so there also are people parking there for that reason to head into town, so. <clears throat> yeah, and the, the can you see the the next steps page here? Yes. Um, so there's seven items, and one was the first one is to verify how we want to classify roads because we do over classify some roads. So sorry, say, what does that mean over classifying? You mean going up in the classification? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a local road's the lowest, and then the, we go up from there. Right. Okay. And then we also, the, the roadway segments, we overestimate too. If we have one that fluctuates a lot, we'll just pick the biggest width and use it for the whole length of the road because we're calculating 
quantities in our program for pavement management. So oh, I see. So it's better to have a high quantity and be under budget than right. have a low quantity and ask for more money. Got it. Counselors don't like that. So do you, <laughs> Guilford, do you uh, classify the roads or does the state give you um, criteria to classify the roads? We've used two, two programs, two methods for doing that. We use the state method and we also have used part, some of the, um, the ASHTO method for doing it as well. And we have sort of a conflict. We'll use them both. Mm -hmm. Um, so then, so then you're saying, according to the, the way that they're classified, then um, some, it's really by, it, there might be certain parts of a, of a street that don't necessarily, uh, aren't as wide as, as, as the classification states for, for significant segments. Is that correct? Well, not so much by classification, it's just the fact that we just a road like a road will go in and out a lot and have different widths down the whole length and we'll right. just we'll just take the biggest length and use right. that to okay. make things easy. Right. Okay. Now Guilford before one of I think before the TAC talked about this before you sent us a list of all the classifications of all the roads. I think it was like in Amber sent it out to us. I yeah, I remember seeing something like that. Yes, she yeah. sent all of it. This has all gone out once before. Yeah, but you this is an it. updated version of your memo, right? Because it's from March. Right, the memo is different. Okay. Did but this is the same memo that went to TSO then? This is the memo that went to TSO. Okay, got it. So I think... Um, it's good that we are thinking, I think, uh, thinking about this some more, um, but I, it, it seems that we should wait until we're requested to really review this and give our opinions before we spend a, a significant amount of time um, going through this. Um, yeah, and I, and I think to sort of expand on that, we've given Guilford a lot of stuff and some of it's gone in already. I don't know if these other further conversations will help refine it to get it to the point that it needs to be now. Um, and then anything beyond that, yes, we, we should, we can wait. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I mean, it is gonna go back to TSO, right? Because right. they did have a number of questions, right? And Darcy, you're the chair of TSO, so you're yeah, expecting to see it sometime. <laughs> Yeah, I've basically left it up to George. Um, so he's working on it. Yeah, it's not, it hasn't been scheduled at any point yet. So, but I could foresee that if it does, and if we take it up, that um, now you've set a precedent. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, that's what i was afraid of yeah <laughs> and, uh, tso uh, was very happy to use your work you know um and 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 by the way thank you very much that was wonderful but i could see that um you know yeah maybe you know it might not uh, guilford has done most of the work already so it might be more of just uh re you know, putting more suggestions into work that he's already done. Well, and I think to Chris's point, it would be really helpful to see the map, like with the classification. So Guilford did send us, I guess it's like a spreadsheet type version with like the list of all the streets, um, which is good in some respects, but it's also helpful to just see it um, laid out spatially yeah. so that people because people might not know what every single street is called and just to sort of see like where are the materials and everything like that and and also it sounds like there may be that because some of the streets are over classified in terms of for the purposes of you know the paving schedule and the maintenance that that could be something that maybe could be looked at in terms of this policy i don't know if you can have two classifications for a single road or road segment but um, I wonder if, if we might end up like noting those, um, you know, noting which streets aren't, you know, are potentially overclassified so that 
maybe having an exception that they can come down in the classification. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's possible, but I, it does seem that um, for this to be a really productive um, conversation, we should see a you know more advanced, um, we should have for notice of the, you know, see the, in our packet, have the, um, the memo and, um, and, and making it an, an agenda item to also look at the classification, you know, what, what streets are classified as what, and the map and the memo together to do real work, right? So um, if, if that, it, you know, so if that does want to, if you do want that to come back to us after you, you've re revisited it, um, Darcy, your committee, um, that seems like that ends up being a, an official agenda item and um, work, you know, real work being done on that, um, right? Um, well, just like we did, yes, please. Well, and I think too, I mean, the fact that we have this other item related to the bike ped plan and we're getting closer and closer right. in terms of us finishing yeah. that, that that would also send some direction that these are the yeah. designated bike routes. Yeah. So. yeah. so I have a question um, for Guilford, I think, which is if roads are not posted, no parking, is it assumed that you can park there? No, it'll be... We'll have to come up with a method. Well, we'll have to do kind of a combination to say that um, we'll have to come up with a method to kind of do that. My, the one thing I was thinking about was posting the roads, like the main road saying no parking unless to and designate spaces. And that, that would be the way to do it. And then the local roads would be parking unless there's no parking <laughs> posted. So that's kind of the flip side of it. Mm -hmm. But now, Guilford, you had had a list that you brought to the TAC, I don't know, probably like a year and a half ago. And it, when you were looking at just like for the winter, right? And that you also just said, no, here's a bunch of arterials collectors that we don't want parking on. And I remember that DPW had put together a specific list of streets. The, and the did that list. ever advance to the council for, because that seemed like a really good starting place. And that could also be something that could be issued um, where everybody can see it publicly. So it would be really clear because people might not just know, you know, which streets are, which streets aren't. But if you just say the following streets, you know, it's not allowed. Right. So but, outlying neighborhoods like say Echo Hill or Orchard Valley or Amherst Woods or whatever, people can park on those streets unless it's a snow emergency. That's, and they can't park in cul-de-sacs, but yes, they can park on the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. So That's would there, I guess with the cul-de-sacs or with the exceptions, if we wanna, I mean, like, would there need to be, I guess that could be a question for TSO too, like whether there need to be some formal policy about the exceptions or under like which circumstances. I mean, cause one of the issues is with the um, school buses, you know, too, but like on the weekends there aren't buses. And so, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I know some people who've had special events and they've contacted the, town police and said we're having a special event and we're going to be parking in this area that has restricted parking and they've gotten like an okay in advance or something I don't know whether that needs to be a formalized process but so uh, do we have a sense beyond um, Lincoln and Blue Hills and Dana and uh, I can't remember the the east west street where parking is an issue uh, do we have is, is there other are, are there other problems that, that need to be handled uh, and also besides uh, I mean, we know about the parking on the arterials. Uh, is there more than that? Uh, I, think, I think that some of the counselors have people who have problems in their neighborhoods, their districts. Right. But weren't you particularly concerned about um, parking Guilford on, was it 116? For for us, it's the yeah the main the main roads are the ones that we were kind of concerned about because of all the rental properties that are springing right. up along all these. Yeah, it's the parking in the shoulders are just is just getting out of control. Yeah, and because there, there isn't just a lot of room and going through, I'm thinking of in front of the um, the school there. What is it? Fort River Crocker it? Farm Crocker Farm, yeah. Those houses there, like, right? 
So that's actually park, that's Mark New Park. Oh, Crocker mm -hmm. Farm, yes. Right. In particular. And the street seems pretty narrow in that in that particular location, but I mean we've actually in a couple of places where there's some big residential properties that are rentals, they've parked so much on the edge of the road, they've broken up what was put in as a shoulder for the bicyclist. And it's like cut it in half because they've cracked off so much pavement, it's now just gravel. Right. So those are the things we want to prevent. Yep. Um, okay. All right. So thank you for that. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All right. Um, oh my goodness, what did I? Oh, I'm writing on my agenda. <laughs> um, next, the next agenda item um, was uh, 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 Tracy brought this up, which was um, a discussion of where the um, DPW camera information is stored and who has access and what that's used for. Is that correct, Tracy? So, I mean, it was actually just a question. I, I was just flagged it when I heard Guilford was mentioning because he was talking about the roundabout um, mm -hmm. at Pomeroy and just in terms of the different costs, you know, in terms of the signals and stuff. And he just mentioned that there were cameras and that there were cameras at quite a few intersections. But I mean, I didn't really know anything about the cameras, whether they're video cameras, whether they're sensor cameras or anything. I mean, I do know, you know, there are some, like I believe the roundabout on the north end of the UMass campus, those are, they actually have video cameras there. They did for a while that they use them for like monitoring traffic and also students have used them for a number of projects. And, you know, that data is pretty secure. And there's also like it's shaded out where the dorms are in the camera wow. view so that you can't, you can't see into the dorm windows, you can't see the dorms. And, um, but just in terms of just like as a general question about if there is any sort of data collection, you know, what's collected, where it's stored, who has access to it, kind of things like that. So, I mean, I know that there's a variety, a lot, a lot of times when there are projects like the roundabout or, you know, along construction corridors or something that there sometimes will be video cameras so people can get live feeds about what the congestion looks like and so on. And then also some communities, so not Amherst, they do actually have cameras at signalized intersections where they record people like running red lights or speeding and things like that and then they issue tickets so i've never heard of the amherst dpw and amherst police doing any of that i don't know if we have any of that but it was just sort of a more general question about what kind of recording or cameras are there so yeah so so before guilford answers i just want to note that you mentioned two different sets of cameras, which are, it's a, and that they're different and it's important, I think, or maybe they're, maybe they're the same, but the cameras at UMass that happen to be pointing at roads, those are surveillance cameras. They're there to collect information for the, the, the UMPD cops, uh, UMPD. So the other cameras, which I thought what we were gonna be discussing here were the ones that regulate the lights. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're so, I think there are two different types of cameras, surveillance that are specifically just surveillance that may also operate lights, and then others that are just there for control uh, to replace the wires in the pavement. So, um, all right, that's it. Uh, I think Guilford will be able to answer these questions. Yeah, yes. no, I mean, yes. I think, Aaron, before Guilford, I mean, I think that's an interesting point, but I do know... Right, so there are a lot of times, like if you have a traffic light, there will be some kind of sensors, either sensors in the pavement or also like camera sensors that will sense that there's traffic there and then they'll change the light. Um, but on the UMass campus, they actually are doing it not, they're not U, U, UMass police cameras. I mean, though there are those cameras as well to like prevent crime, but there's also just cameras monitoring the traffic at the roundabout. <laughs> Yeah. And they were set well, up and, as part of the Arctic project, which is like Regional Transportation Information Center, just to see how traffic moves around the roundabout, since it was one of the first ones. Yeah, so I think, it's, I think it's important to pull it apart because yeah. um, the, the surveillance, that's an issue. And, and I know the, the town council has been working on that. They have new regulations on, um, on facial recognition and things like that. And then there is sort of the traffic related, which is for control. 
So um, it is just two different things that, that one which we might be more comfortable responding to than the other. Yes. Let's hear from uh, the person who knows. <laughs> so once a month, we have a uh, contest and um, uh, you probably haven't heard about it because we've been keeping it kind of low key. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like you do the wildest, craziest thing you can in front of the camera <laughs> and then we review it and the best one wins a prize. So basically all the footage we collect and we review it and watch during the working hours when we're supposed to be doing things for the town. And we rate these um, according to the best stunt and then give them a prize. So that's what we do with them. <laughs> yes, right. So that's not what we do with them. Um, <laughs> we, we have two types of cameras we're using right now. Um, we have an older, older version and a newer version. And actually this is the newer version. Can you see that? Yeah. It's called, um, it's, and it's used for traffic link detection. It's all it's used for. You can do other things with it. Um, we bought this system because you can do other things with it. Um, but right now, all you do is it basically tells the camera, the camera takes a picture or actually doesn't, it just records video. And when the video stream changes, it knows a, ca a car has gone into the detection box and it, it tells the controller that there's cars waiting to go through the intersection or it tells the controller that cars are or aren't going through the intersection, depending on which side it's focused at. Um, there's not much information in the brochure here, but you can look it up and you can read through it. Um, but it works really well and it, it works on a set of, we, what we use is a loop detection system where we draw boxes on the, on the picture of the camera or on the monitor of the camera. And when things cross those boxes, it tells the controller if things are in the intersection or waiting to go through the intersection. And there's, there's you, this camera and the old cameras do allow you to record and store the data, but right now we don't have the ability to do that. Um, so the, all it does is it just has a camera on a site and when the, the picture changes, it just tells the controller the picture has changed and the picture, nothing, nothing else happens. Does it pick up bicyclers? Well, the interesting thing about this new camera system is, is that you can program it for, um, uh, where is it? Um, I thought I set it on here. It does, this camera here can pick up bicyclists. So if you designate a bike lane, and you want to count people who cross through the bike lane, it can count those and it can count cars and it can count pedestrians if you have the additional piece of equipment you need to go with this, which actually we don't have. We're trying to get it, but we haven't gotten it yet. Um, and and yeah, so, the, so I mean, does it pick up bicyclers that are in the in the car length? Is it, I mean, there are bicycles in a, in a uh, where there are bicycle lanes, that's great. But also, some bicyclers actually use the, the automobile lane to travel in. And you know, uh, in the um, in the wire systems, they have the special detector with the symbol on it, so that you know where to go to be detected by the light, by a smart light. I'm just wondering if the cameras can be set up to do the same thing uh, when there is not a bike bike lane. It, it depends on it depends on what's going on in the picture that day. Um, we we talked to the video the provider about it. What happens is if the bicycle is a rather large, heavy bicycle, the bicycle if it's in the travel lane will get counted as a motorcycle. Oh. And if it's a smaller, lighter bike with not as much on it, it, it actually will get counted as a bicycle. So if you're in, in, if you're on a bike, you should go through the bike lane because that'll count you as a bicyclist. It's good to know. So Guilford, are the images stored for a certain period of time? They're, they're, it's a nanosecond. It's, um, oh. it just show, it, actually, it's not even a nanosecond. It's just a picture. And as the picture changes, it 
knows that something came through the box. So it doesn't store anything. And so, be, but like you really said, cool. Guilford, I mean, it has the capability. You're just not using like any of that functionality with it now, right? Because it's not yes, linked it has, to anything. It has the capability, and you can go. You can go to this website and the mono, the, uh, mono vision, and you look it up, and you can see everything it can do. And so, do these cameras? I mean, do you, are they, are they what what are what are you using them for now then? Counting. They just control the. They just control the light. So okay. So it's specific. It will stay there until the light the light goes away. If it does go away. Right. So it just instead of putting loops in the ground and then they get broken or we cut them up and we repave the road. This camera is always above the road okay. and it just continuously controls the. It controls the controller for the traffic light, saying there's cars there, so there's cars not there. You got five cars backed up. That's a that, that type of thing. Do you use these on all the signalized intersections or just some of them? Right now, I think we have a, about a third of the intersections have cameras. Mm -hmm. There's like, so about five, six, six, five or six intersections have cameras right now. So I'm assuming that, um, you know, if, if our surveillance technology bylaw is enacted and if the DPW um, or if the police department decided that they wanted to use the DPW cameras for any reason, then they'd have to go through some process to do it. If that bylaw passed, um, but right now it sounds like it's not it's not being used in that way, right? It's not being used in that way, no. Is it capable of recognizing people's faces? capable of doing anything you want to do basically mm -hmm. um, if you put enough if you buy all the pieces and parts that go in this system you can read license plates you can alert the police when it gets a certain license plate you can do facial recognition you can count how many people are in the car um, if it's got untended windows um, yeah it can do the whole these cameras can do the whole thing wow so but you would have to uh, purchase that software, whatever it is that gives you the capability to do it. And then that would trigger, I mean, if we did, if we do pass the surveillance technology bylaw, then yes. you would have to go jump through hoops in order to do that. Yeah. I mean, there are different modules that go on to it that help that analyze the data, the picture and the data. No, I'm not really interested in doing all that stuff. I just... <laughs> All we all we really want to do with it is count cars going through, um, and that actually doesn't require re recording unless you want to have a record of what you counted and then go back and verify it counted correctly. But um, we're just trying to get it set up so it can actually just count cars and people that go through the intersection. So you could use that instead of traffic counts. Well, it is. It would be a traffic count. It'd be a continuous traffic count, and you'd have you'd have up-to-date data all the time. Hmm. Well, so the UMass, the roundabout on, on the UMass campus, they've done some traffic counting with using that video mm -hmm. and also done some like automation of the technology to do the counting and things like that, so. Yeah, but th those cameras have to take the video and analyze the video. Oh, right? no, of course. Yeah, that's what they do, right. This would have no, this would have no stored video. This would just have Incidents where the this, this instances they call it instances where the picture changes. Oh right. Cool. All right. Any other discussion uh, questions? That was actually very illuminating. <laughs> Thank you, Gilfer. That was very useful, um, and and good to know we're not um, surveilling our our <laughs> townspeople too. Um, so. Also, the next the next agenda item um, is our um, market continuing looking at our bike ped plan. Um, Guilford, do you have that? Why? Yes, I do. Oh, so Kim, I just had a question yes. before we switch to that. Um, on the work plan, um, 
I yeah. did just have a question about the tax charge. Um, just because I know that we had put together a draft charge, I don't know, in maybe October or November. And oh, is Aaron still here? I guess Aaron's not here. But Aaron had been in touch with um, the town manager about it and so on. And I, he had mentioned that he had some feedback or that the town manager would give feedback at some time or something. And I, so if you I, I was going to ask, I was going to ask Aaron what the status was if he's still been in touch. But oh, there's Aaron. Aaron's back. I, can I just say something? I think if you look at the town council um, agendas, they have a section at the bottom which says upcoming things. And I think I've seen either the tax charge or the tax status or something on oh, that really? upcoming agenda section of the oh, town council agenda. So go look at one of the recent agendas and see if you can find that. Do you know Maybe. about this, Aaron? Maybe he's not listening. It hasn't been scheduled for a discussion. But it's no, I, I, we're going under a bridge every once in a while. That's when it drops um, out. Um, did, hey, Aaron, are you with us? I am with you. Okay. Um, there was just a question about um, uh, potentially the TAC being on the town council's agenda. Do you know um, anything about that? We were thinking that it might be the um, charge. Okay. So that was very, that was very. Okay. So maybe we won't, um, maybe we'll hold on. We won't talk to Aaron so much. Moment, yeah. Okay. Where's Aaron going? <laughs> you know, what makes you think that you're on the town council agenda? It's not it's not on the agenda, but if you look at the bottom, it says topics for discussion or for topics for later agendas. And the tax charge is in there for a, a later agenda or a later topic, but it's not been scheduled anywhere okay. in the right. I think that is a holdover from um, um, the past. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I think that Paul does have that on his back burner, but uh, okay, I haven't heard anything about it, so it, it hasn't. I think that it would come up in tech or in a TSO first. Okay, so you'll give us a heads up. But to Tracy's point, um, we did, you know, we we should be revisiting um, our charge and making sure there were some significant changes I feel like that were that we had discussed. Um, so um, are you thinking maybe, so how about, uh, you know, I would, I, my plan is to just get one of these major items just done. And that's why I wanted to, I keep putting the um, bike ped plan on here and we keep making progress toward it. So perhaps that can be our next to completion item, because I assume that the bike the bike ped um, plan finish will be finished soon um, at this rate. So, um, Tracy, does that seem reasonable to you? That, oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I guess it just yeah. So, I mean, if we think about the tack charge, right, it dates back to when there was a select board, right? And yes. it needs so to it's, be updated. it's a number of years old. So that was just it. And because occasionally it comes up and counselors say, well the TAC isn't doing what's on the charge, but of course some of that has changed and also just to clarify with the tax rule. So I think, I think that's so, perfectly reasonably, uh, that's absolutely. a reasonable next like item to, and, and it, it seems like it's something since we have been working on it, something we can accomplish in a meeting, in a, in a couple meetings at the most. So thank you for that um, agenda item and Aaron, uh, I'll make sure Aaron um, knows that that is yeah, yeah, now. I'll get, I'll get the rest of all of that. Uh, yeah, I would also yeah. add that that we have just in the course of doing our work added or even brought in new ideas that should get into the into the charge as well. So, yes. Yep. But that's definitely something we can do next. Thanks for that, Tracy. Um, and um, I, I guess before we because the bike um, ped um, plan, I think we'll work on that till pretty much till the end. And I'm just wondering if there are any um, subcommittee um updates before we get to that so i'll just speak to that briefly i was in touch with eve today she wasn't able to attend um she has been working with a grad student from uh umass and they've been working on some of the subcommittees work um in terms of the prioritization matrix oh, and those pieces of it 
Um, and also this work that we're doing on the bike ped plan, right, in terms of the map, that's also part of the subcommittee. So work oh. because if you think about it, right, we're, we want to have certain criteria related to like, is it on the map as a route and so on. So oh, yeah. that's helping us as well. Right. Um, so I think, you know, I think it's moving along and I mean, Guilford, I know that you had, I guess one question I had just in terms of the DPW's timeframe that, that I had heard that Guilford would, that you were looking at the, in terms of submitting something to the state, you know, in terms of complete streets and then having a consultant work on that plan, which is related to, but not entirely a hundred percent, you know, overlapping with this effort. Um, and I didn't know if you had any updates on that, like if there is a consultant or There's if no anything's opinion. being done, so. so. No. And you did have like a student, an undergrad or somebody who is gonna help you with some of that, right? But then. We, we have an undergrad who's gonna be helping with uh, the map, right? The map. And oh, great. He's not, okay. he's off for this. He's gonna be off for the summer here right. soon. Oh, okay. Uh, summer internship, that's what we need, so. All right. So, All right, uh, thank you. Uh, Guilford, can you bring up that, that map? Why, yes. Why, thank you very much. Do your magic. Great. And I can see that, yeah. Um, do we want to? I think we were. We ended up uh, down, yeah, down, yeah. Let's expand, yeah. Can you remind us which is blue and which is red? Is bicycle blue and walking, walking is red? Is yeah. red and blue is biking. Blue, bike, walk. Red. All right. And yes, we are here. So let's see. Okay. So we're on. Um, did, I thought we were. We left off. Yes, Aaron. So, so um, as we go on, is, is Marcus, are you really there? You sound like you've had a few beers there. <laughs> <laughs> is mark i think he said something about marcus being here i wonder marcus are you around I yes I marcus is here okay great and aaron i don't think we fully have aaron yes no i'm sorry i yeah i'm here i'm just um watching my daughter play soccer at fort river sorry hey great i, I can hear I am that. paying attention a hundred percent yes a hundred percent of course thank you <laughs> thanks marcus Thanks. Now, the, the, the reason I'm asking is that with Marcus and without me, it's still a quorum, and I'm in a sort of bad reception area here. Yeah, yeah. Marcus. So is. we couldn't even hear you, Aaron, when you were talking to us to tell us about your request. So we understand. So, so, I'm, so I'm not even there. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm just wondering if it's okay for me to, to bail out a little bit early. Yeah. Well, Marcus is here, I guess. So yes. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Okay. Um, so can we, um, so what is, um, is it, oh, what's the north, uh, south, that's 116 yeah. that we're looking at. Okay, and that should be purple as should, um, what is the, the crock, the other, what is that street? I can't read Chase it. Street. Yeah. Chase Street. Okay, great. Um, and what about um, any other routes um, around the South Common? That's all bike blue. Um, it, um, should any, I, I don't know that area well enough to. Well, I think there, there's so, a very short, there's a very short section of sidewalk that goes in front of the library, I believe. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Can, can somebody zoom in on this map? Yeah. So we can. But that sidewalk doesn't extend beyond the library, I don't believe. Yeah. But it does seem like it. Um, at least that area should um, be walkable, right? In the in the area of the common, right? 
on the outsides at least. Well, there aren't that many sidewalks there, right? But I think there's a sidewalk on the west side. Yeah, west the library. Side. The, li um, the library side. There's a sidewalk on the library side, but then there's also a sidewalk in front of those houses on the west side in front of the um, school. Cool. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And actually, the sidewalk continues down uh, toward town for some distance, then it stops. Right. Gil Guilford, what do you think about that? Yes, you know that, that better. Yeah, there's a sidewalk down to. Oh, about. It's, it's about, it's yeah. a little in here somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, so that section should be purple then. Yeah, I would imagine that. The, and, and it's, and you know, it's within the limits of our uh, town center limits too. Right. That, right. Village center. Yeah, village center. That's it. Thank you. Um, so, um, Guilford, you'll make that magic happen. Actually, so what about, what? Go, ahead. go ahead, Guilford, I'm sorry. When we redo this, I mean, we can turn on the, we can turn on the sidewalk layer and show all the sidewalks in town. That would, um, be, that would be helpful, I think. You can do that now? No. Okay. Not, this is just a PDF. Right. Yes. But, okay. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> but but the, the data they use this from, they didn't they didn't turn on the sidewalk layer. They have the you know they have the parcels and the roads, mm. and oh, I conservation see. I areas, see. but they didn't turn on the sidewalk layer. Yeah. Also, is it possible to identify the bike path in some way to either maybe with a slash line or even put neurotic bike path a few times. That's a really good point, yeah. Well, so. Oh, isn't that yeah. what that is? That's what that is, correct? That, that's yeah. what that is. Right. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's what that is. It's, it's not labeled, labeled or set off in any sort of a way. So now had we looked at the north part of Southeast Street, I feel like we didn't fully. No, now we're I, all the way down at Crocker, but if we go back up to the intersection, with um, Route Nine, for example, like did we? I did. We didn't look all. No. Like there's Fort River, right? And then there's a sidewalk that goes down to Colonial Village. All right, but I was also thinking, right? I mean, you have the school, but then you do have these different apartment complexes, and but even along Southeast Street too, right? Like right near the. Does no, it I go guess, down to I guess where the nine. bus stop is? Is it down to the bus stop? The sidewalk there? The sidewalk that goes from Fort River is right here all the way down to right here right, right now. There. Right, yeah. And that's where it stops. And then there's a sidewalk on both sides of the road to around in here somewhere. And then it continues on this, the north side of the road. Which is why it's it's both colors. And then like, for example, like you'd want the sidewalk, I mean, in the network, you'd want it to go to at least like rolling green, I think, right? Well, the Which, sidewalk actually does stop at rolling right. green. Right, it, it goes, it extends. So we, that would be important, right? To just show that yeah. too. Especially since there's a bus stop there. But also it's the apartment complex. Right. And then if we wanted, I'm not saying, but if, I don't know if we'd want it to extend like all the way out to um, Hall Drive or not. Cause that's like, cause that's like talk, medical uh, complex and everything. There, there's talk about going all the way out to um, Old Belchtown Road because of the- um, Well, that would make a lot of sense, you know, and especially I uh, like, you know, the red, where the red line goes to. Right, sure. Because I mean, so part of it is showing where people are going and then also what we would want as a network. I mean, it seems like it would be nice. You have these other neighborhoods out here, so it would be nice if we could yeah. extend the pedestrian corridor out towards the, yeah. I totally, yes, I agree. Don't you have plans for improving Belchertown Road, Guilford? We do. And what do, what do those plans include? Everything, nothing, and <laughs> do they include sidewalks on both sides of the road? Um, 
they do up to a certain point, and then we drop it. I think we yeah. drop it at the we drop it at um, Old Belchtown Road. Mm. That makes I mean that makes sense because there's a mm. sidewalk on Old Belchtown Road which goes around the Pali Village. Sure. And there's a sidewalk on Larkspur, a private section of Larkspur Road. Ooh. I'm pointing with my pen. I'm not pointing with my pen. So there's a sidewalk here. <laughs> It ends here, and then there's a sidewalk here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we'll make that um, that I guess where the the part of Belcher Town Road out to the um, the red demarcation of the village center, or even or even just this old purple. Belcher Town Road Route Nine intersection, maybe. Yeah. Right. I mean, the circle is just a radius of a certain yeah, I know. diameter. I know, I just yeah. extend it a little more, just as, yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so, um, and it looks like we're at the end of Amherst, so perhaps we can um, just reduce a little bit <clears throat> and move to the left. Can you reduce it just a tiny bit, sorry. So is the idea with this that the, that, not that this is these are currently ideal areas for bicycling, but that you want to develop them into a network. Yes. It's that that when yeah, that's right. And also um that when there are further improvements, this is our ideal. Yeah. So we'll aspire. It's an aspirational map. And that it's also about creating connections like where there right. currently aren't, right? So if you're gonna have apartment complexes and bus stops and things like having networks to help people use those who are walking. And biking, yeah. And biking. So there's one curious thing here, which is why is Dennis Drive included when all the other streets like Mount Holyoke Drive and Valley View Circle and all those others aren't? It seems like Dennis Drive is not really- uh, Where is Dennis Drive? I don't, I don't the know. Left. Right oh yeah, that right seems here. very strange. That should be taken out, I think. Right? Yes, I would agree. Yeah, then that's why we're going through this again because there are strange things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and another strange thing is that straight line that comes out from 116 and goes west towards the apartment complexes. And I don't know if that was just like, we want a path here. We don't know where it's oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Let's just draw that. Well, Maybe. that's nice. I like that. <laughs> There's a path. No bridge. There's there no isn't path. a bridge. Yeah. Right now, but um. So that that actually does exist. No. No. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. okay. So I guess we've identified now two things that need to be taken off this map, which includes that Dennis Drive yes. and whatever that mystery um, red red. Line I mean, is. I think it is a nice idea if you could have yes. a path, but particularly like from Crocker Farm, like right to the apartments, right? But yeah. Well, there is a, there's a plan for that through Hickory. Um, oh, really? Hickory. Through Hickory Ridge, but that's more down towards Pomeroy Village. I don't know if it's going to go to Crocker Farm. I think the plan is that there's going to be a path from East Hadley Road apartment complex to Crocker Farm. That's what I, that's what the, uh, I think that's what the Dave Zomick plan Says, oh, uh, okay. that it's it's uh you know to to and it, you know to serve the East Hadley Road population is my understanding. Oh. Um, that is that is a concept, but there's the problem is, is there's no bridge right now. So and I don't know. Maybe out. if we wanted to have it on the network map, I mean, it would be a good connection if it's possible. Maybe we can have it. In some dotted form or something is something aspirational that it would be nice to connect those areas if it's feasible. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking back to our original, all the public forums and things that we had. And I feel like there was a lot of discussion we were having about um, potentially it was that connection. It could have been it's kids, you know, trying being able to walk to Crocker Farm because currently, yeah, wasn't there? There was a discussion about that. So I mean, so I mean, my kids Crocker went to Crocker Farm. Farm, and there are quite a few people from the apartment complexes who walk along East Hadley Road. My families walk along East Hadley Road, and then they come up on 
116 mm -hmm. like to get to Crocker. It's just not as direct. But I mean, it hap I mean, that's that is still a path to do that. And now East Hadley Road has been improved, so it's pretty nice to do it as well. It's what just did, very, it's very indirect. What did you decide early on about whether you were going to have off-road paths on this map? I think you decided you weren't going to have off-road paths. We did. I mean, we looked at those ones from, say, like East Pleasant, the East Pleasant Street neighborhoods down to UMass, and we took them off the map because that's right. Yeah, they're, we they're took not there. All of those. Right. And so that would be in the same category, wouldn't right. it? Right. But I mean, it's possible. Maybe, I mean, maybe that could be a discussion, you know, at a future meeting. And Eve isn't here. It would be good to hear what Eve thinks about it. But mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like it would be nice perhaps to have some of those connections indicated, like particularly if they are important corridors. Um, and just to note that they're a little different than things that are actually like on the network or could be improved on the network right now that they're more well i mean a, more potential than actual like possible at this could time it be a difference of whether or not a path is paved that's true too and that's what that i think that was something that we were discussing the when I, eve was present when we were talking about um whether or not to put those um the thing through through off of North Pleasant through her, up to her neighborhood. I forgot what that right. the agricultural lands there or whatever. Um, and I think we just I mean she was kind of rallying for it. And I think the the rest of the committee decided because we had just made another um, decision about something further north in in North Amherst we had taken those off that that was like a separate issue. Um, well, I think there's also an issue of accessibility if it's a, a dirt That's path right. and somebody absolutely who is disabled can't use it. it is it appropriate to have That's it right. shown as if it could be used? Right. right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I think uh, we well, should. Well, maybe could we revisit that when Eve is here? And I mean, it, it is nice to think about that there could be some better pedestrian connectivity. I mean, maybe that's not realistic between East Pleasant Street and North Pleasant Street, like given the fields and stuff. Right. I don't know. And I get, and I don't know the South Amherst area well enough to know how realistic it is. But there is a lot of density on East Hadley Road. Yeah, look at like that. Like much more density than on East Pleasant Street. So yeah. if it is a possibility, it might be nice to note that somehow. Not with that red line that's there right now, but some... <laughs> Yeah, I like your idea of some sort of dotted line or something that could be said, proposed, or a possible future route, something like that. Okay, so we will, um, we, we can discuss that at a future meeting, so that red line. Um, let's continue with, um, uh, let's revisit now the South Amherst Common. Um, so we're going to put purple on on both sides of that common yeah uh-huh okay um because that seems to make sense and let and then we're all okay with the per, two purple heading south there that seems reasonable okay and again what is that red um at the base yes oh that's pot wine yeah that's actually the pot wine extension red is walking and so is that um are there sidewalks there no. no but that that's an important corridor too and it should be i think it should be purple i'm not sure why it's red yeah i agree um it does seem curious that it's um just purple i mean sorry just red that's all paved now right hot wine yeah hot wine is paved all the way I mean, and there's the fields and stuff there too. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know that extension. That is, does that kind of go up a hill that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so, so we think, we think the pot wine piece should be like the blue and the red, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And um, I'm just curious, yeah, if we can go a little further south here. Mm-hmm. Um, so why is South, uh, let's see, that's Southeast Street. Why is that purple and Middle Street isn't? 
Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I was just thinking that myself. Mm -hmm. um, Guilford? I don't know. I mean, there's no, the sidewalks end somewhere around here, I think, mm -hmm. on Southeast Street, and there's no sidewalk the rest of the way. Yeah, I think that should be blue because I think it'd be very unlikely that that's pretty sparsely populated. It's very there. sparsely but, yeah. yeah. And I think we were making decisions like that. Yeah. So um, blue then. Yeah. Southeast yeah. Street. Mm -hmm. So blue for biking, right? That middle it was street, green. on Middle Street, yeah. Right. And but even, but even, what about Bay Road though? Too isn't that Bay Road? No. It the, is Bay Road down below. Yeah. Purple. That uh, I don't think Bay Road should be purple. Oh, it yeah, is man. there. Yeah. So I mean, Bay Road is mainly, yeah. Bay Road should be Mars. biking. It yeah. shouldn't be pedestrian. Yeah. <clears throat> Although, I mean, it is, it does not seem very, I mean, I do see people walking out there. It does not seem very safe, especially in that stretch right there. Probably, yeah. Um, and it's probably just maybe people doing loops, you know, around <laughs> there. Um, I, it is curious that that little stretch is purple though. Um, this might've been an artifact of, of um, you know, people marking up those maps back back when we were physically doing that. Um, so this is actually a more densely um, populated area, this triangle here. Yeah. So maybe that makes sense to have a walking yeah. path mm -hmm. around the triangle, but then not to exactly. have a walking path from Mechanic Street North. Right, yeah. I yeah. would agree. Because that's also just a minor road, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I guess, so, so, but we don't really have, we don't have um, like pedestrian areas indicated inside neighborhoods, right? So I guess, is this considered? Yeah, maybe. I'm like, sort of like, if it's just the triangle, where are they going? Mm -hmm. You know? Here around in circles. In terms of like a network or anything. Maybe it's the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> so. Disappear. I don't object to the triangle idea. It's just like part of what we're trying to do too is also just, develop priorities in terms of like the overall network right yeah so it's not consistent so i guess i would advise taking the red away from this whole yeah. stretch of southeast street including the triangle i think that makes sense i think I so i mean maybe you could have this little red stretch on mechanic street if you wanted i guess but but you just pointed out that we weren't doing neighborhoods right right, right. yeah i mean we haven't been doing neighborhoods yeah um, so Guilford, I think that's um, a plan. I think we get um, rid of that red um, stretch. On and the, on Southeast Street too, right? Going all the way back up to. This one and this one and this one. I yeah. think once you leave the South Common, right? That you don't really. Somewhere around South Cemetery is when the, when the sidewalk stops. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Sorry. Yeah, can we go back? South cemeteries yeah. in here. Yeah, that's so right. Some, that makes sense. Somewhere in here, the sidewalk ends. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we just have a go to pot wine or something. Yeah. yeah no, and that see that is far. more. Yeah. And then after pot wine, there's a lot less density oh. and yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the name of a book where the sidewalk ends? <laughs> yes. It is. Yes. Shel Sil Shel Silverstein. Yeah. And then we're going to keep the pedestrian, the walking part on West Street because it actually does have the path now all the way along to go all the way to Atkins, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, then I. Is. Yeah. But then there's nothing after Atkins, I guess. It goes all oh, the way to Country oh, Corner. To, oh, sidewalk. just a Country Corner. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That sidewalk goes all the way up there, right? Yes. Okay. That's good. That's excellent. Oh, the roundabouts are on the map. Good. Mm. And there aren't side sidewalks all the way around the roundabout, though. This is yeah, that's no. they're absolutely not sidewalks. On the only on one on that yeah on the one side on the one yeah the west side west side yeah the west side connecting with Atkins. That's the only part of the roundabout, and I think that that doesn't actually need to be well. So that's a question. If with West Bay Road, then I mean that doesn't really seem like a pedestrian corridor either. Well, it's because of the the it it's the the elderly community that's right over there, right? Applewood. 
Yeah. People are intending that that's going to be a walk yeah. place. And that right. was, that was a very vocal, like that was a long yes. discussion mm -hmm. that predates when we, before, before you were there, Tracy. Um, and I think that's why that's on oh. there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Has, to Apple what I see. Yeah. 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 There's only right now, there's no, there's no sidewalk here. But we have an intention to put one there. It is. It it would be nice to have it go to Applewood, and then also right then it goes to the Eric Carl Museum. Yes, correct. That's right. But I don't know if we need to have all these reds around the roundabouts because that doesn't yeah. really seem realistic. Those aren't very pedestrian friendly roundabouts. <laughs> well, and and yeah, and, destination wise as well. Even if you're coming, and so maybe up we road, maybe we just label like what's there right now, and maybe if you do have it at on the roundabout itself i'm saying yeah it should it should reflect what is actually right. going to be in here. so the west side not the east side of all of that right mm -hmm. that's what i think yeah i agree good and that's we're pretty much at the end of amherst look at that and how, about, walk up up over the <laughs> and how about if we did we go all the way to the um the east side i think there's mm -hmm. nothing yeah oh. okay great i don't i don't know that there's nothing but i see now there's nothing there we did it we did it <laughs> south Amherst is a lot less dense <laughs> yeah so. right yeah that was a little easier um so Yay. we Yay. have gotten through and we have even a minute to spare. Um, are there any other, so, um, and then what is, how, how are we gonna proceed with this, Guilford? You can, now I guess we have to wait for um, the student to come back to finish that map off or? Well, we, we'll have other interns over the summer because okay. we'll just have someone start working on it and see what we do. Great, um, and you'll get back to us when it's, closer to completion. Being yes. Done. Great, thank you. Great. Awesome work. Um, so are there any other, um, any other topics that we need to bring up? Any un, not reasonably anticipated topics? Do you, do you want to approve the minutes? Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you for that. I'm sorry, I forgot. I forgot all about. I'll that. I'll move to approve unless somebody has a comment or a question. And who's going to second? Oh, it looks like we have we no longer have a quorum. Oh, okay. Um, we, okay. Can't, we can't approve. Oh, well, Marcus is gone. Yeah. Yes. So we will have to put that on the agenda for next time. So, um, so thank. I guess that means we are done for the. So one question with having a quorum, right, is we've had a vacancy um, for a year, over a year, since um, that other person stepped down. Um, you, you, you have seven members, so you have to, uh, you have seven positions, you have to have no, I, no, 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 I understand with the quorum. I'm just wondering, like, hopefully we can fill that vacancy, like I, maybe that's something we can ask the town manager yes, to, if, there's, that, if that there have been long. applicants, and because... It is always harder to achieve a quorum when you don't have members. <laughs> so, yeah, he is looking for people and he's advertising. Okay. Um, Aaron, Aaron also said he's not going to reapply. Oh. So there'll be two vacancies in. Okay. Well, there's one now. There'll be two in at June thirtieth. So. Um, is so life term expiring in June also? No, I don't believe so. My term is expiring, but I am, will reapply. Um, so is that something we should then um, prod um, our town manager about or? I... Uh, it's actually easier if you actually know people who are interested in this topic and say, hey, why don't you apply and send your CAF in and that helps move it along. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Now, how does it work practically speaking? Like I know with E, like if if the reappointments don't go through for a while, is like is Aaron off the committee right away, or is, does he hold over until like there's reappointments? Or no, right now it would be when his appointment's over, he'd be off. Okay. And the town manager is doing um, 
you know, a whole lot of reappointments right now. Um, okay. So uh, normally, I think that you'll be checked with to see, you know, like, do you want to stay on? Mm -hmm. And he does a lot of those are just pretty automatic. Right. So like, technically, I'm not sure that and anything ever went to TSO about Kim being reappointed? Like, if you look on the TAC website, it says that Kim expired last year. No, except that I I had no. I, I remember I reapplied, and I then I or I re whatever, and then I did it again, and I was told, "Wait, you already did that," and so oh. I don't know where that is. Like, it's just, but, it's just someone didn't change the chart. Oh, okay. The, I didn't know if it ever went to TSO with the reappointment or anything, or whoever had to reapprove it. Yeah, the TSO is right now doing, you know, we're not having a meeting tonight, but at the next meeting, we're going to have a ton of uh, reappointments. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so new Bruce, Bruce new you expire on the 22nd, on um, 2022. Okay, thanks. Don't let him expire. <laughs> well, that's when it expires. He can renew. That, that sounds rather serious. <laughs> Uh, all right. Okay. Well, okay, we thank you. Answer? So I guess yeah. it sounds like so after June 30th, we will only have five members on this committee. So we will need to like, so it will be challenging to always have a quorum. So we will want to so recruit have, and recruit, find bodies and things. Recruit your friends to fill out CAFs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. We're on it. Maybe we can start meeting in person again. You can just schedule a, a happy hour at the end and uh, that would encourage membership. That's right. Oh, it's that's very good to me. Yeah, yeah, are there any updates from the council on that? Has anybody heard anything? Uh, or what, meeting in person? Yeah, uh, when would that be ever considered? Uh, I don't think so. And I know the Board of Health just um, uh, renewed the mask. Um, the, they decided, I think today that- Oh, I thought it was next meeting, wasn't there? Was yeah. it today or next? Oh, well, they it's not that there was a decision today that the um, mask, mask order continues in Amherst. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good idea because there are going to be a lot of people coming into town to take the students home, right? So, yeah, graduation. Yeah. No, that's a, that is a good point. Yep. Okay. Hey, All right. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Night. Did we adjourn? Are we officially we, adjourned? Yeah. Well. Well. I mean, we're. Oh, no we don't have a quorum. We're, we're done. Quorum. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.